Writing adionic equations is basically a simplification procedure. It allows you to take balanced molecular equations um, and remove those items that are not actually involved in the reaction. Um, so basically, it, it cleans everything up. So in order to uh, write an adionic equation, you first need to have um, a balanced molecular equation um, with all of your reactants and products. Um, you need to know their uh, states in terms of are they aqueous, liquid, solid, etc. Um, so that in step number two, you can break apart any of the ions that are in aqueous compounds. And you'll see this in the next uh, couple of examples. Uh, the third step, you cancel out the ions that show up on both sides of the arrow. Um, so uh, if you have an ion on the left and an ion on the right that's the same, you can cancel them out. Um, those items that you are canceling are known as spectator ions. Um, so basically they're not actually involved in the reaction. Um, they are just basically floating around in solution and um, available. Uh, step number four, um, after you've done your canceling, you rewrite your um, ions and molecules that remain um, after you've done the cancellation. So basically you uh, write whatever hasn't been crossed out. And this will give you your overall net ionic equation. Um, basically, a net ionic equation is is the equation without the extra stuff, or you know, minus those items um, that are not important. So let's go ahead and let's look at this example here. We have an equation. Um, if we go ahead and uh, balance it real quick, uh, we need a two right there. We've got two nitrates on the left hand side, um, two sodiums on the left hand side. Uh, we have a chromate, chromate, one lead, and one lead. Okay, so, so far we're balanced. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to write out um, all of the ions um, that would be formed in uh, this reaction. So we have one, two, three aqueous um, compounds. So what we go ahead and do is um, we have lead, two plus, we have one of those. We have two nitrates. Uh, we have two sodium ions, we have a chromate ion, alright, <clears throat> notice that our uh, lead chromate on this side is actually a solid, it doesn't actually therefore get broken up into ions, so it stays as PbCrO4, okay, and last but not least, um, you have two sodium ions and two nitrate ions. Okay, so after we've written out um, all of the ions and broken everything apart that can be broken apart, uh, we then go through and cancel out any ions that show up on um, both sides. Okay, so notice Pb plus 2 is on this side. Okay, there is no Pb plus 2 on this one, so the Pb, that Pb plus 2 is left alone. Uh, notice the nitrate shows up on both the left and right hand side of the equation. Um, so you subsequently uh, cross them out. Same thing is true for this sodium ion. Okay, uh, chromate in this example. Okay, it does not show up as an ion on the right hand side, so you leave it be. So once I have crossed those out, um, we then rewrite the equation with those items that remain. So Pb plus 2. I'm going to write its state because we do know that it's aqueous. Um, our chromate, aqueous as well. And then PbCrO4, solid. Okay, and this here is our net ionic equation. This equation has the reactive species, those items um, that are actually going to give us a product, um, and basically it's without any of those spectator ions that we crossed out earlier. Remember, the purpose of the net ionic equation is to allow us to visualize the reaction without unnecessary um, species um, being present. So uh, this is just one example. But you would follow um, the same approach for any other um, equation in which they ask you to write a net ionic equation.